I'm Fern Cotton, and on this show, I'll be spending time with a multi-million record-selling artist who divides opinion like Marmite, James Blunt. My journey starts as I join him in France in the middle of his gruelling world tour. Well, I'm out. Let's do this. Then I catch up with him on the paradise island of Ibiza. King and queen of Ibiza. And finally, we head to the winter playground for the rich and famous Verbier, where he gets in a spin. Oh, my God. He tried to get me in there. Are you... What is wrong with you? <laughs> we address some issues over a fondue. I'm proud to be English and proud to be British and, yeah, I'm getting a little bit of a hard time now. And James shows me how the big boys do it. And I've you've never, never been in a I've helicopter? I've never been in a helicopter. This is proper rock and roll stuff right here. This is Fern and James Blunt. Now, it wasn't long ago that whenever you turned the radio on, you were never far from a James Blunt song. For five years, he ruled the charts. James burst onto the scene in 2005 with the phenomenally successful You're Beautiful from his debut album, Back to Bedlam, making him one of the biggest overnight sensations of our generation. He was showered with critical acclaim and awards by the bucket load. But with that success came a media backlash. And as people ridiculed the posh, harrow-educated military boy, the public perception changed from a guy who could do no wrong to an artist that nobody would admit to really liking. Suddenly, the negative press was followed by radio stations not playing his music. His last album was critically savaged, and soon he seemed to disappear off the UK music scene. So what's he been up to? Where is he now? And who is the real James Blunt? My journey begins in the beautiful city of Bordeaux, where he's playing tonight. Despite all we've heard about James, he remains a very private person. But are all the myths about Mr Blunt true? I hope that during our time together, I'll find out. His management have already sent me a message saying I'm not allowed to knock before midday as he had a gig last night and has just done a 300 mile through the night stretch on the tour bus to get here. And hope that he's not asleep, because that's going to be annoying. It's opening, it's opening. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hello. Hello, James Hello. Blunt. How are you? How are you? Um, very nice to see you. Nice to see you in beautiful Bordeaux. Yeah, bienvenue à Bordeaux. Come yeah, on in the bus. Thank you. Oh, this is very space age. Yeah, yeah, this is this is home. So this is this is where you, this is where you live, James. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I've, been, I've lived on a bus really for seven years almost. I'm a traveller. Lounge. So, so yeah. Well, there's the beds. Where's your one? Um, yeah, there's a bit too soon for you to ask that. Um, but there are 14 beds on here, and there'll be 12 people it's sleeping on so. So if you need, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. He's very. He's a very angry man. <laughs> this is lovely. Grab a seat. Very cosy. Yeah, it's not bad. It's so really... after a gig, you'll sort of come back in here, lounge. Is that what you do? Yeah, I mean we normally try and have a little after party after every concert. After every concert. Yeah, pretty much. We have a few drinks. The driver starts the bus. He drives through the night, and when you're drunk enough, you pass out in your bunk and uh, and go to sleep and wake up the next city, the next city, um, the next day and look for a shower. Rather than take a taxi to town for lunch, James surprises me with another form of transport. Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs> My first impressions of James are good. He seems to be polite, punctual and super tidy, yet I sense he's being a little standoffish. Do you get to actually do stuff like this normally on tour, like go and see the city or the, the place that you're in? Yeah, well, that actually is why um, me and the band have all got bikes. So that when we arrive in a new place, we do get to go and have yeah. to go and do a little tour. Otherwise, it'd be a shame to kind of just see the inside of a venue. All right, chill out. God, scared the hell out of me. Is this sort of you know your favourite form of exercise when on tour? Do you get to go to the gym or anything like that? Um, I don't really enjoy gym so much. No. I don't know. Do you do that kind of thing? I do actually, James. Yeah, I, I quite enjoy gym workout. Right, we're finding a lot of differences we between are, ourselves aren't we? at the moment. I, it's quite a nice sort of simple sort of way of life then touring. Yeah. Exactly that. I think we're simple people. Oh. Sorry, she's Sorry. English. Sorry about the I'm English. Sorry. 
bad bike etiquette right there, that was. Does it still sort of feel like a bit of a novelty and a bit luxurious getting to travel and sort of see all these places and do nice stuff like this? My first album, Back to Bedlam, came out in 2004 and I've really been on the road since then. Mm. You know, I'm used to going to different places. I just don't normally sit out having lunch yeah, in somewhere great. so civilised with someone like you. You're ex-army, so do you still have that sort of militant way of mind, like you want things done a certain way? Because you're very punctual today and I was really shocked about that, I have to say. We are known, That's as a, a band thing. and crew, we are known as the most punctual people in the whole of the music business. Are you a slave driver? I suppose we work a lot. I've done 195 cities this year. Do you ever just think, oh, sod it, I don't have to do this anymore. I've got loads of money, can't be bothered. Not yet. While I'm still big in Germany with David Hasselhoff and <laughs> Brian Adams, <laughs> no, might as well, might as well carry on. Because when it's over, it's over, isn't it? I suppose a lot of people out there might think, James Blunt with his band on tour, is that very rock and roll? No, it's not rock and roll at all, is it? No? We go on bicycle rides. So have you fulfilled some rock and roll cliches? Throwing TVs out of windows, that sort of thing. Plasmas now. Done that? A friend of mine did it, but I did, really? I did watch. You watched? I did watch. <laughs> what about the worst gig experience you've had? Like, just a terrible gig, terrible show? I have um, a, a tub of squeezy Marmite on the stage because it's really good for your throat. When the lights went down and I squeezed it on my mouth, and the, the audience don't know what I'm doing, obviously, because it's pitch black. All they saw was when the lights came back on. <laughs> I had some brown, dodgy <laughs> <laughs> substance all over my face. And they thought, ah, oh, in his spare time, when the lights go down, he likes rimming. <laughs> that is lovely. Um, has worse happened? Um, well, I've taken to stage diving now, um, which obviously, you know, with the James Blunt crowd, they, uh, that takes them by surprise. It They're took like, them, what are you doing? It took them so much by surprise the first time. The crowd parted, and I, I just smacked down onto the ground really hard. That's embarrassing. Yeah, thank you. Um, and my trousers split last night. Last night? Yes. And I was foolishly wasn't wearing any, any underwear. Someone's gone for a rip then. That's I'm not entirely sure. It's far hard to feel. I, I can't work out whether people are having a grope or not. If they are, they're kind of welcome. But they're the perils of being a rock star. I'm more of a soft rock star. OK. I think you're not allowed to quite do that, you sort of... Rock. Soft rock. Soft rock. Rocking softly. Let's go. As soon as lunch is over, we're into the car for a signing session at the local Virgin Megastore. Do you get often asked to do things like, well, you sign my boobs, that sort of thing? Not often enough. Right. No. So we, we want to put that vibe out there for that to happen more? Yeah. OK. As we turn up at the back of the shop, all seems relatively quiet. And to be honest, I'm not expecting too much. But as soon as we walk in, nothing could have prepared me for the walls of screams and blunt mania. being a complete superstar in France. I mean, he is huge. I'm not sure that he would get this sort of reception if this happened in the UK. I mean, you've got all ages turning up here, from, like, young girls to their mums, like, whole families have come down. There's hundreds of people. They're screaming, they're going mad for him. Hey, salut, Bordeaux! Do you get a bit of a kick out of this sort of thing? No, I think it's totally weird. <laughs> Hey, While James doing? signs away, hey I bump there. into a lady who I reckon must be his number one fan. I try to follow him uh, as soon as I can afford it. And it's su such a ple pleasure to see James. Uh, and I, I say hello to him. Thank you. So I think, I think you're going to go and meet him in a minute. Oh, you're going? You're going? Yeah. I mean, there's passion right there. If I was James, I'd be scared right now. Got the yeah, yeah. And for you. He remembers her. For you. Yes. Bonsoir. Take care. Bye. In the UK, James is perceived as a bit naff, but leaving the store, I have to say, I'm in a state of shock. I'm starting to think we might have it wrong. I really wasn't expecting the amount of people or the female attention he received. 
So I have a letter here I was just given really? by someone. What does it say? Thing. And I, I don't know if I will show it to the camera. Oh my god. Yeah, with a phone number, an email address. We probably, we probably won't show it because there's a I lady's don't... face and we yes. don't want to get into all that. But I will, I will recreate the pose. There's a small dress being worn and then there's this face and this hand doing this. Okay? That's, that's what's happening there. I really like it. <laughs> Coming up, I try to get under blunty skin. Where are all the chicks? They're next door. I sample the local brew in Ibiza. <coughs> yeah, yeah. And things really get going in Verbier. Were you farting in that <laughs> cup? Because I kept on smelling farts. 